This week in Darwin, there are decisions to be made. Spring is coming, change is the order of the day, yet the atmosphere is a curious mix. Optimism tempered with pessimism. A brooding calm with much thinking to be done. Darwin Band is hoping next week to win a place at the National Championships in London. This concert before critical fans is their last before the big day. good mates you see we're all friends all friends together the, the family atmosphere in the band is fabulous it is. Gordon Clough is the band's musical director Gordon has the ability of knowing what a brass band should sound like so I don't think I ever give them a hard time they'll probably tell you different but <laughs> he's a great bloke he's a swine at times <laughs> like everybody else I think a lot of his opinions that's a uh, well, I wouldn't say I worship, we, we worship him, we think an awful lot of him, yeah. The morale is very high, we sort of on the, on the up, I'd say. I've only been playing for 45 years, and I just love music. Whether it be Dizzy Gillespie, Billy Rimmer, Sir Malcolm Sargent, it doesn't make any difference to me. That my husband's got to watch for me, and I even on occasions while I'm out with the band. And some, especially when we've Saturdays and Sundays, um, obviously I never see my family. I'm out with the band. It's an average of an hour to two hours a night practice, plus rehearsal time. So that's what, uh, about 18, 20 hours a week in your spare time. got to be that way if you're going into a contest, haven't you? Another contest the people in Darwin hear rumours of is one being considered down south. Will the government have an early election? I think people would like, like to think that there'd be an election this year, but personally myself, I don't think uh, there will be one. I think she, she's that hard, she'd see it right through to, to the end. The way it sounds with Labour Party, I think she'll get in while she can. I don't like any of them. I'm just, you know, I get fed up with them arguing all the time with one another. I just wish they'd get together a little bit more and do something better, you know, instead of keep arguing with one another, against one another all the time. They don't seem to be getting anywhere. Sylvia's jaundiced view is one shared by many, including Pauline Lishman. I haven't a clue how she'll convince people to vote Tory, especially if she holds her shopping bag up again like she did before, because there'll be nothing in the blooming thing. Because I hold my shopping bag up and I can't get anything for a pound. So I don't know how she's going to convince people. She'd never convince me, and certainly not convince Lancashire people. We've had a rough deal in Lancashire, no question about it. Now, obviously, the, the, the Lancastrian showed her that when she came up here a few days ago. I can remember when, if, just when she came into, uh, into government at the beginning, I said we were just about doing nicely. And now we're struggling to get through one week, never mind anything else. No, she's not got inflation down. Tell television, but they, 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 they juggle them figures. 
to suit themselves. They don't, they can't juggle my purse. When I open my purse every week, because I get same every week, I know there's not as much in there to buy stuff. It won't spend the same, not anymore. I think the possibility of a June general election is remote. Um, when I, I went to see Mrs Thatcher a fortnight ago, uh, her remarks were, everybody else in the country seems to know when there's a general election going to be called. I'm, I'm the one that doesn't. Whatever she does at Budge, it will make a difference as to whether she goes in June or but October. Satchi and Satchi, of course, are already buying up uh, hoardings, hoardings on, on roadsides and in towns and things like this for advertising purposes. Mm. So it's very obvious that they're going to put some Tory what notices on. What issues do you think uh, they'll fight on? They'll want a noisy election, they'll want the noisiest election they can get. There'll be a lot of noise, it'll be run, run pretty well if, if they get Satchi and Satchi in on the, on the lines that the Americans run their elections on. Promise them nothing, make a lot of half promises and hope to get away with them. Simple as that. Well, if I were Maggie Thatcher, I'd have an election in June. Solely because the Labour Party's in a bloody shambles. I'll tell you something there. It only need one, Mum. And Tony Benn's got them on because I think he's a bit bloody do lolly tap. It only needs one man with a bit of bloody going Labour Party that can really jam up the door eight. But I don't think Michael's the man for the job. There's no alternative. I don't think there is an alternative now. I think Conservative will walk in again. There has to be an al a bloody alternative well, for us. They better be bloody quick about it. It's got, if she it calls a June election, so we're back in. Well, if we get another four or five years of this bloody lot, we will be out of bloody work. But I'll tell you now, I don't think politicians where they are today think out of it, the people in the country today. I think it's just a matter of keeping their bloody jobs. And listen, when we're talking about politicians, we're talking about people with very, very good jobs. We're not talking about blokes that used to crusade with bloody flat caps on. We're talking about blokes that's been to bloody universities and all sorts. They can get up and give a speech for a bloody hour and tell you now. But they make it look bloody good and this is what they're doing, they're like bloody show business. The razzmatazz of local politics is something very much on the mind of ex-Mayor Rendell Allen. Should he contest the next ward election? But do you not think though that with council that you in a way flogging a dead horse sometimes? Do you not honestly? I think if you thought that you'd never stand. You must remember that um, the, the greatest uh, Prime Minister of this century <laughs> was, on, was, now was, start a bit was about my age when he took over the cabinet. Who? Winston Churchill. Oh. You'll have to ask your accountant when you can finish. What does he say? You can't do it. Why? Wow. I said that the government won't allow you to uh, finish because they'll want too much in tax from it. And you look like right, tell you last night. Do you think you're doing too much? Yes. And what can I do without it? Eh? Uh, it's, it's up to me. It's me that's got to do something about it. I've got to make the decisions. Well, I can't make them for you, can I? No. The thing that worries me is not being able to do anything properly. I think that's the, that's the thing yeah. that bothers me. Mm. Well, when you're in so much, there are times when something has to suffer, isn't it? Well, what you tend to do is you pull like a piece of elastic and, um, and you, you can uh, snap. While the ever-jogging jeweller marshals his thoughts on whether to give up the business, a new one is considered by Ashfaq Shigri. I'm seriously thinking about uh, selling this house and uh, buying a newspaper shop. The job I am on at the moment, I don't think um, I have any future on, in that job. My wife, she can look after shop and same time she can look after kids. Then I'm thinking about going uh, myself uh, for uh, advanced training in automobile scores. Our kids, they're growing up now, and one day 
if they are clever, right, they might just go for degrees or whatever. And still, if they can't manage to find a job, so I would prefer them to stay in the, our newspaper shop and lo uh, look after the shop instead of going and signing on dole, because there are already a lot of people signing on dole uh, at the moment. You coming back? Yeah, when, after. When, when you coming back? About six weeks after. Six weeks. It's early, isn't it? We have to, you know, yeah. can't afford to stay there. No, 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 no. can't afford to leave here or that. You know. have to. You go home, you think, oh, I've got my wage and my husband's wage. You go shopping, you think, oh, I'll take 30 pounds shopping, and you don't get nothing for 30 pounds. You have to come back. You can't manage with one wage, can you? No, no it's not. Some people, they don't understand, do they? They say, hey, you, you working, your husband's working. Yeah. Why can't you stay home? You know, you get, you've got three kids you can afford with family allowance. What can you get for with family allowance? No. You can't get anything, can you? No. And Five pounds, nothing. No, it's nothing. And you think, they think that, oh, it's something with three kids, you get enough. But I don't think it's enough family allowance. It's not enough. I've noticed, uh, most of the effect of this recession has uh, gone on the immigrant side. And just take, for example, figure unemployment in Blackburn. Every third Pakistani is unemployed. Just because they, uh, most of them, they used to work in textile. Sometimes people, you know, they complain, they say, oh, look at all these Pakistanis, they get together. If you go to social security office, 99% of them are just waiting there to uh, draw um, some state money. But uh, don't forget, you know, they, when they first come here, they, they didn't sign on dole right away. They've been offered a job. And now, just because them industries have uh, finished, demolished, they've no choice. The only thing they, are, uh, they have now left is to just go and sign on the dole. So it's not fair to say that, because when you need it, all them people, and when you were expecting a big boom in your industry, they didn't come themselves. The ministers and uh, big powers of this country, they went to Pakistan and India to bring all that cheap labor. And now, you, just because you have uh, uh, no jobs left, and you just, you, you just don't expect them to uh, go for uh, their own rights, which every other white man has got a right. If he hasn't got a job, he'll, he'll just go and sign on door. With painful miles still to pass, is Rendell's future any clearer? Certainly it is for the young Conservatives. I think she's going to run the full term, though, because, I mean, she's got enough policies to see her through uh, the full five years, plus, you know, another five years. So I, I think she'll probably hang on till sort of, uh, mm. say, spring election next year or something. By the time June comes along, um, the issue regarding the boundaries would have been settled, and both parties will know exactly where they stand and on what, uh, what, uh, what, the, what the position is. And also, the, um, the party will be in a fighting state. The unity in the party is incredible. Uh, the, the feeling of unity that's there and the momentum that's carrying the party forward is something I've never experienced before in the Conservative Party. She's a cause mass unemployment everywhere, eh? But I think the Falklands will swing it, you know? She was brilliant at Falklands, weren't she? Really, really great, you know? For a woman, she's fantastic. I think that the longer uh, they wait, this terrible and stupid hysteria which has followed the Falklands disaster will evaporate and people will begin to wake up and start to realise just how bad a state this country is in and how bad it has got since 1979. We've had a lot of terms bandied about recently in the last few years about social justice, industrial democracy, but I would like to coin a new phrase industrial justice no, and I would like the members of the TUC to take note of this I repeat it industrial justice in hard times the government expects the small businessman to display entrepreneurial skills according to Jim Hurst that's not as easy as it sounds we're struggling to keep people in wages we're facing increasing costs all the time and no doubt more increasing wages coming up soon with the next wage round plus shorter working week extra days holidays extra weeks holiday time and a half for overtime all these sort of things it's not relevant to the times that we're in we can't control the operation in the way that we would like to a regiment is as good as the CO but the CO in the army has control in industry manufacturing industry we don't have control if you make a small profit 
then that really should go back into the business, shouldn't it? Rather than distribute it out amongst the workforce, who are well paid now. I think they're quite well paid, aren't they? Would you say that? They just do not know. They haven't had the banks on their back, the, all the creditors on their back, and still having to put on a good show and still make things happen. And we are making things happen. People in industry, manufacturers, don't want to take on new employees. Keep the head count down, they say. Take on robots, whatever. And this is sad. It's immoral. But it's necessary, and I can see the point, because people, employees, are problems. What would happen? If we did get into deep water, what would really happen? I mean, there's such a lot at we stake, get isn't there? Well, you know water. what I mean. If uh, if the bank decided that we were no longer a viable proposition to them, mm -hmm. uh, we have all the housing, mm -hmm. they have our insurance policies, they have our lives, don't they? Really? I would not take this lying down at all. I would start again. I, I, I would roll up my sleeves, I would do anything, I'd take a job, but I would take on something in order to get a little bit of money to start again, if that were to happen. But if I did start again, I would make absolutely certain that it would not be in manufacturing, it would not be in a situation where there were any trade unions, and it would be in a situation that I had a very good chance of controlling. Yes. Then we should probably make a very good living. You would develop your singing, you'd probably take on some teaching again. We might get around to our dream of taking over an old hotel and start a palm court night once a week, and I'm pretty sure that we could really make a success of that. So I don't think the unemployment situation would worry me at all. If I was only selling better wear brushes, I would do it, and I would you build up again. You me, really, because you're talking like a 25-year-old, aren't you? Yes. You know, you should be thinking about retiring. <laughs> well, you know, it's getting in that direction, isn't it? How old was Churchill when he took over the Premiership? I no, I, I think if you've got your health, you have a go. I'll make it if it kills me. <laughs> it probably will. It probably will. I'll get some sort of small business going. Have a young family. Have a lad leaving school in a few weeks. And there'll be a girl leaving school the year after that. Hopefully, if they can't get jobs, I can absorb them into the business. Whatever, I don't know what the business will be. I'd like to think I'd have a full-time job before this scheme finishes. Well, I hope so, anyway. Yeah, I live at home with my parents. I don't stay downstairs all that much. I stay in my bedroom more often than not. One of these days, I'm going to have to move out and find my own place. But I can't really afford to move out now. If I could raise enough money to start up in my own partnership with my mate, then I might have a chance of like, getting my own house. If I don't get a job, I can't see any of my ideas coming to light, you know, coming to reality. I need a job to get me into this partnership to begin with before I can start looking for my house and things like that. I don't really think of the future properly um, because for the last few years it's just been going down and down and down. So I don't know, I just more or less live from day to day. It might get considerably worse, it might be. All sorts happening, but they've got to get better eventually. Oh, but better for who? Better for the rich. Generally. My big hope is I can work till I'm 60. And then I don't give a monkey's what happens, because I ask managed to get through. There's no guarantee that you'll be at Reeds when you're 60. Hey, there has to be a future. I mean, there's no future now. What are you going to be like, you 30 year, 20 year? What are you going to be like? You're all talking like everything's dead. No, it isn't. There'll be someone up. No big goats for the future at all. If I can lift to be 60. Keep up, Belgrave, where I am now. I'm not so bad. You'll be all right. I'll make a do. And what if you don't? And what if you don't survive till you're 60 at bloody Reed? It's not so bad as he is. We'll have to get through. By hook or by crook, we'll get through. By crash, you'll get through. <laughs> I hope I do. I had to draw my super on out when I got made redundant at the last firm I was at. So my future's not rosy. I won't be sat in here probably, I'll be sat at home watching telly if we have one. If we listen to what Maggie's doing now, right? Oh, you're sticking up for Maggie now, are you? Let's listen. All we need to do is start a war, kill millions, 
then we'll all be here where it will This is what's down to the last two generations. This is what she might be doing again. The 1914 war and the 1939 war. They sold all unemployment with that. That's right. And I think they'll do it again. But if they do, I'm afraid it's to the finish them. They started making ornaments. Of course they did. And this is what we finished up with. We had another yeah, war. The British ambassador in Berlin handed the German government a final note, thinking that unless we heard from them by 11 o'clock, that they were prepared at once to withdraw their troops from Poland, a state of war would exist between us. I have to tell you now that no such undertaking has been received, and that consequently this country is at war with Germany. Friends, and uh, you are all my friends, the Darwin division has existed for a century, but it is now coming to its close with dignity and success. Thank you Sir all Charles Fletcher Cook, MP, is retiring. As a result of the recent I Boundaries Darwin Commission ruling, the, the constituency of Darwin will no longer exist. It is going with a bang and not with a whimper. We shall defend our island, whatever the cost may be. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing grounds, we shall fight in the fields and in the streets, we shall fight in the hills, we shall never surrender. and Audrey, tonight's Warring Forties is to be an evening of tasteful nostalgia and a deep dig into the pocket for the who knows when general election fighting fund. If there was a war started tomorrow, I'd, I'd probably sign on tomorrow. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm probably a bit down to actually fight like that, but I'd probably sign on. Well, it's, uh, if you don't fight for, your, for what's yours, uh, you've had it, haven't you? That's what it's all about, isn't it? It doesn't mean you're over patriotic or out like that. It just means as you'll do your, do your duty, I suppose. God save the Queen, old son. <laughs> Use that, that were good. <laughs> Don't forget, you know, we're subservient from birth or working class. 
It goes back years and years where they used to doff their cap to manager when they were going in. It's still the same. But young ones today are like our Martin. They're not heavy. They're not heavy. Half of them wouldn't go and don uniform and fight for Queen and Country. Our Martin wouldn't. No way. He's right what he says. He'll go to jail first. Mind you, I'd give him a good hiding first. Don't forget, you know, a lot of these that will be asked to fight, they're like out to fight for, they've no jobs, no houses. They haven't the same commitment as they had in them days, have they? They're not better. And there's worse off than him. People that's never worked and never had any money, they're not going to bother about kingdom country or anything like that. Not going to bother a bit. Britain's doctors say 33 million people in this country may be killed and injured in a nuclear war. A report from the British Medical Association says the government has seriously underestimated the number of casualties and that the whole country's medical facilities would be overwhelmed by just one bomb. Uh, cruise missiles yeah. stationed here? No, I'm not convinced. No. And whilst we just had Polaris lurking out in the seas, nobody ever saw them. Uh, occasionally, if you, if you happen to be sailing down the Clyde or standing on the shores of the Clyde, you would see one slide past in the water. But it's because they're now becoming land-based that people are realising that the threat is there. If they think that the nuclear issue is so important, then let's have a referendum on it. The fact which is overlooked, I think, is that, that Russia has got a very genuine fear of attack. Let's face it, Russia has been attacked and overrun far more often than America or this country. And America's never been overrun. They've never had to fight a war on their own soil, so it's all very well them saying, oh yes, let's have nuclear weapons and let's put them in Europe, in England, so that we can sit back in our nice little bunkers or in the Pentagon and fight a war in, in Europe that, unless the clouds drift our way, isn't going to affect us at all. They were overrun by the Germans in the last war, yeah. and it's a very serious thing. And I think it might be an idea if there was some genuine recognition of that fact in the West. Mm. And perhaps that might be a start. What the danger of a report of this sort uh, amounts to is that you take some of the worst assumptions, the consequences of that decision produce you with a situation so horrific that you say, well, we should take no steps at all to prepare civil defence. Now, I don't think that that is in any way a, a justifiable way to make progress. Yes, I think that's, that's us there, isn't it? That's the this week, the Byrne family bought a retreat in the Orkneys. The public road, that's the yellow road, isn't it? That's the one looking down southwest. Beautiful sunsets, I would think. That's the pier, isn't it, at Kettletoft, where the hotel is. I mean, eventually, it is going to be a marvellous place to live, isn't it? Oh, yes. No question yeah. about that. And such friendly people, such a quiet, peaceful place to live, such a, a wonderful contrast from the, the life that we have at the moment. Hey, you, did you hear?